Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters. I'm your host, Mitch. Glad to have you here. This episode is going to be part of an extension to our deck tech series called Reasonably Upgraded. On these kinds of episodes, I show you what I personally would take out for those reasonable upgrades. So in order to get these new cards in, we're going to have to stretch that $25 budget. And prices on this show are powered by our sponsor, TCG Player. Before we get started today, though, make sure you go check out our new classic pink playmat and Commander's Quarters t-shirts on thecommandersquarters.com. And thank you to everyone who's already purchased our merchandise. It really does help support the channel. Also, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and click that little bell notification icon so that you can stay up to date on the latest Commander's Quarters episodes. This reasonably upgraded is on Child of Valara. Now, if you haven't seen this Commander's deck tech yet, make sure you watch that first, so go ahead and click that link in the top right. That deck tech is going to take you through the strategy, tactics, and how to win with the deck. Whereas, reasonably upgraded episodes like this one are going to show you what I would swap out for those reasonable upgrades. I just need to make a quick disclaimer before we get started. When people ask me what I would swap out for the reasonable upgrades for a deck, I always tell them that it depends on your meta and your playstyle. So these upgrades in this video are going to be 100% from my perspective. And that perspective is going to differ from person to person, so just keep that in mind. Alright, now that we're on the same page, let's get into it with one for one. In one for one, I'm going to go through cards one at a time on what to put in and what to take out. The decisions that I made are based on putting in all six reasonable upgrades into the deck. So take the exact swaps with a grain of salt because my decisions may have changed if I was only putting one or two in. First, let's add in High Market, which is a land that can tap for a colorless, or we can tap it to sacrifice a creature to gain one life. And for this, we're going to be removing one forest. High Market provides an incredible amount of value for this deck. It is a repeatable sacrifice outlet that can survive Child of Alara's Wrath Effect. On top of that, this sacrifice outlet is basically free, and it's going to gain us one life. This deck has plenty of ways to ramp and plenty of ways to fix our mana, so losing one forest isn't going to be that big of a deal. And then let's add in Crop Rotation, which at instant speed is going to allow us to sacrifice a land in order to search our library for a land card and put it onto the battlefield. For Crop Rotation, let's take out Enter the Unknown, which is a sorcery that's going to make one of our creatures explore, and then we can play an additional land this turn. Crop Rotation is a fantastic way for us to get one of our best land cards and put it directly onto the battlefield. That can be a Sacrifice Outlet, Maze's End, or just one of the gates that we need. Enter the Unknown is by no means a bad card, but it does depend on us actually having a creature in play. And if we don't have a creature in play, it's just a dead card in our hand, and we don't want that. So swapping it out for Crop Rotation is an easy decision. Next up, we're going to be adding an Expedition Map, which is an artifact that costs 1, and we can pay 2 and tap and sacrifice it to search our library for a land card, reveal it, and put it into our hand then shuffle our library. For Expedition Map, we're going to be taking out Razakest Rite, which is a sorcery that costs 3 black black. It allows us to search our library for a card, and then put that card into our hand, then shuffle our library, and we can cycle it for a black. A pretty high percentage of the time when we're tutoring for a specific card, it's going to be a land. And because of this, Expedition Map is a lot more efficiently costed and helps us get the job done easier. Instead of paying 5 mana to go get that land, we essentially have to pay 3 mana, and we can do that over 2 turns. And then we're going to be adding in Scapeship, which is a sorcery that says, Sacrifice any number of lands, search your library for up to that many land cards, put them onto the battlefield tapped, and then shuffle your library. To put Scape Shift in, we're going to be taking out Diabolic Revelation, which says, Search your library for up to X cards and put those cards into your hand, then shuffle your library. For this deck's purposes, Scape Shift is basically a cheaper version of Diabolic Revelation, which does its job even better. The land cards that Diabolic Revelation gets are going to be stuck in our hand unless we've got other ways to get them into play. And we can search for other cards like Summer Bloom to help us play those cards, but we do need a ton of mana to make this all happen. Scape Shift, on the other hand, only costs us 4 mana, and if we have enough lands in play, we can nearly win on the spot. And then we're going to be adding in Temp with Discovery, which is a sorcery that has Tempting Offer. So we're going to search our library for a land card and put it onto the battlefield. Each opponent may search his or her library for a land card and put it onto the battlefield. For each opponent who searches the library this way, search your library for a land card and put it onto the battlefield. Then each player who searches a library this way shuffles it. And for Temp with Discovery, we're going to take out Lay Druid, which is a 1-1 human druid that can tap to untap target land. While these cards aren't directly comparable, Temp with Discovery can go get us one or even more of our most important lands. And while Lay Druid can ramp us and untap Maze's End, it's also a little slower than some of our other untap effects. And finally, we're going to be adding in Seedborn Muse, which is a 2-4 spirit that's going to untap all permanents we control during each other player's untap step. By putting Seedborn Muse in, we're going to be taking out Blossom Dryad, which is a 2-2 Dryad that can tap to untap target land. When you put these two cards next to them, there's absolutely no comparison. With the right setup, Seedborn Muse can help us activate Maze's End every single turn, whereas Blossom Dryad is limited to only helping us out once. So swapping in Seedborn Muse for Blossom Dryad is an easy choice. And now that we've gone through every single upgrade, let's do a quick price check. A quick reminder that our deck costs are calculated using TCG player optimization, optimizing with even heavily played and damaged cards because those cards need a home too. The average Child of Alara EDH rec deck is going to set you back $647.42, so let's see what we compare to that. Even with our upgrades, our deck is going to be much more affordable, coming in at $52.34. And just a quick reminder that our deck cost actually doesn't include our commander because it is a commander-excluded episode. 
And with that, our show is coming to a close, but I really just want to hear about what you guys think about these picks, so why don't you let me know in the comments below. When you're buying upgrades or decks, make sure you're using our links in the description below. Because not only will you get great prices on TCG Player, but you're also going to be supporting this show because they sponsor us. And make sure you follow us on social media so you can get some early hints on who the next commander just might be for a deck tech or even for a Break the Bank episode. Links to all of our social media accounts can be found in the description. Also in the description below is a link to the Commander's Quarters Patreon page, and I just want to say a quick thank you to the patrons who have subscribed so far. There are many benefits to being a patron for the Commander's Quarters, including being able to vote on future commanders for deck techs. There's even a general tier where you get your own personalized deck tech dedicated to you. I truly couldn't do this without all of your support, so from the bottom of my heart, thank you. If you haven't already, make sure that you like this video and subscribe to the channel, and then check out some of our other episodes on budget deck techs, commander excluded deck techs, and break the bank episodes. And with that, I'm out of here. Thanks again, and have a good one.